broke, unemployed, I was starting to slouch. I was sleeping in the basement on my mama's new couch. That's when I heard it all, a chance to skirt it all. A money like my last girl. Completely virtual. Got the top graphic cards, got a power supply. A microprocessor, a motherboard, a tower and drive. I put the RAM in the RAM slot, drive in the larger bay. Topped it off two fans, like a Chargers game. Price back to 30, I missed out, I fear. Crudely assemble a rig like a BP engineer. My friends and family smile and smirk and all make fun of me. But I'ma make them eat their words because I'm gonna be a Bitcoin billionaire. Spending money like I don't care. Flash drives in the underwear. Now that I'm a Bitcoin billionaire. The cash was never ending, yo, I'm scaling, fun and rowdy. I was spending like a seven on a scale from one to Saudi. Call it mad banking. All night and all weekend, my rig is out franking. Grabs what it can while you sleeping. Just try outspending me. You'll see I'm on a mission. Drop more Satoshis than a clumsy Japanese obstetrician. I ain't open to splits. Don't care if it's best or not. Opposing forks like a Chinese restaurant. I went from geek to chic, from basic to ASIC. I went from basement squatting to yachting, from basin to basin. Went from no friends and depression to peer-to-peer -to -peer legend. More contrasting language to establish the impression I'm a Bitcoin billionaire. Spending money like I don't care. Then one day there was a solar flare. Huh. I was a Bitcoin billionaire, spending money like I don't care. Now I just pawn my underwear. Used to be a Bitcoin billionaire. Any change that you can spare? I'd settle for a Dogecoin. I'm so desperate. Good evening, Bitcoiners. It is me. Guess who? Brian, the UK Bitcoin master. It is 6 p.m. here in the United Kingdom on the 27th of September. As always, strong Bitcoin hand. That is the name of the game on this show. And as also says on my T-shirt, don't panic, just hodl. No need for panicking. You will find if you are a regular on my show, I talk about this all the time, that the day-to-day -day price swings are part and parcel of being in early in the Bitcoin space, people. So don't panic, just hodl. Okay, uh, very, very briefly, I want to quickly look at what's going on in the chat and see. Give a shout out to a few people. Bitcoin to the moon. He should be asleep down under now. But uh, BTTM, thank you for um, pounding that like button. We've got Dave Shackleford in the house. Welcome to you, Dave, from Phoenix. My lovely wife, Elaine, who's in the same building as me. Buffy W is in the house. Welcome, my lovely daughter, Buffy. Matthew Underhill, we've got Johnny Midas, his last day in Malibu. Oh no, tear, dreadful. Yorkie Bitcoin is in the house live. Great to have you live, Yorkie. A lot of the time you've got to uh, join us on catch up. So good to see you live. Uh, we have Saf. Welcome to you, Saf, wherever you're tuning in from. Great to have you with us. Rocky Palumbo is in the house. Welcome. Hello from Comifornia. Love that one. Uh, Jerry Gallagher, great to see you uh, back, Jerry, as always. We've got SciFlyer67 has joined us. Welcome to you as well. In fact, welcome to everyone. Steve Wires just joined, watching in Coventry. Good to have you on board, Coventry. Uh, Lancashire South. Wow, we are getting a real UK feel for this show. Um, about time too. I love it with all my US friends. And that's where the, the happening in Bitcoin tends to be happening. But I also love it when we get more and more Brits come and join the show. So... Come on board, bring them in, people. Send the link out to everybody you know. Get them to come and watch this crazy Brit who wants to go live a couple of times a week. Um, who else have we got? Uh, Christopher Harrison, I think I've said that right. Welcome to you from Sweden. Good to have you in the house. Okay, people. Um, very briefly, let's do what we need to do and get these preliminaries out of the way. So there's a disclaimer. 
You're not going to get any financial advice from me, so don't go looking for it. You're not going to get any charts on this show. Don't go looking for it. You are not going to get any technical analysis on this show. Don't go looking for it. I'm just me, a regular guy who drove trucks for over 20 years that knew nothing about finance, that fell down the rabbit hole four and a half years ago, and now I can't leave it alone. Bram VDB, welcome to you. Great to see you in the house. So do your own research, people. If you're finding this now and you're new, if you're finding it in the future, whatever you do, do your own research. Okay, I would encourage you all to check out my archives. Bitcoin in, sorry, UKBitcoinMaster.com, all my videos, everything I've ever done. BitcoinInterviews.com, every interview I've done to date with some of the greatest Bitcoiners in the space. Keep an eye out, people, because October is looking extremely busy for live interviews coming up. And fingers crossed, I've got some absolute corkers. We've already had great Bitcoiners like Rocky Palumbo, who's in the house with us. We've had people like Hasma Cook. He was part of that new Bitcoin doctory, the Machine Greens. So Hass McCook is on there. I've had Bitcoin Meister, BTC Sessions, Gabriel Devine. I think I've got a tweet from him coming up. Um, I've had the Vortex. If you don't know who the Vortex is, go back through YouTube and find out. He was a massive um, instrumental player in me learning how to build a strong Bitcoin hand. And there's going to be more coming in October. And finally, for those that want to drop a lightning tip, there it is. For those that want to just play around with lightning on their phone and practice sending a few sats around, copy Dave Shackelford's um, example. He is constantly sending 10 sats here, 100 sats there, sometimes a few more when he's onboarding people and showing them how easy it is to maybe have a smartphone in America and send sats across the pond with instant finality in seconds. And Dave, way to go, man. You are using it for what it is there for. So let me get that out of the way. Okay, people. Before we start the show, you know I'm very bullish, you know I'm an excitable sort of guy, but I want to start the show on a solemn note, if I may. Um, I don't know how many of you uh, know or have watched uh, Vention or Vention MGTOW. Uh, I think that stands for men going their own way. Um, Vention's been battling with um, cancer for a couple of years now. And I've been, I, I, I've got to know him. We've communicated through my channel and through uh, Twitter DMs. And I heard that on sat Saturday, he very sadly um, lost his battle, um, which is flipping horrific because um, he was a great Bitcoiner. Um, he was one of these people that just spoke his mind. He didn't care who he offended. If he thought it was right, he would speak about it. And um, he was on many people's Bitcoin shows. And it's so sad now. Double-edged sword, really, because he was really, really struggling. He was really, really suffering. I know his last wish was to try and get home and pass away at home. I don't know whether he managed to make that happen or not. But if you go to his channel on YouTube, there is a um, short video explaining that he very sadly passed away, I believe about 1.30 p.m., on Saturday. So Vention, uh, whether you are, wherever you are, brother, rest easy. Um, it was a bit tough on you, I know. And right now you're out of all of that and just rest in peace, dude. And we'll do the work that we need to do here on your behalf. So rest in peace, Vention. Okay, so on with the show, people. Um, you know me. I want to jump straight over to the um, show. In fact, actually, um, did I see somebody else that had joined the show? I like to give people a shout out. Yeah, Badge. Badge and Mr. Tinker 53. Two more British dudes. Welcome to the show, people. Pound the like button, subscribe, bash the bell button, click all. I go live every Monday and every Thursday, wherever I am. And as you can see right now, I'm still in an undisclosed UK location for a little bit longer. Um, so 
pound the like button, join, subscribe, all that type of stuff. Pick the link up, send it out to five of your friends. I'd appreciate it. But tweet it out, retweet it. There's a pin tweet there that makes it easier for you to tweet it on Twitter. Do that, people. I would greatly appreciate that. That said, let me get on over to the desktop and let's see what we've got going on. Firstly, quick look at the charts. Now, if you are new to all of this, Here's why I say do not look at the daily, weekly, monthly, or even yearly charts. This is a, uh, a one-day chart, up and down like a fiddler's elbow. If you don't have that strong, get in there, Rocky Palumbo, Bitcoin hand, you're going to be fudded out by these massive jumps up and down. The seven-day candle doesn't look much better. The one-month chart, I should say, not candle, again, you'd be thinking, this thing's going down. This is not good. We could look at the year to date and it's still up and down like a fiddler's elbow. What do I say, people? Zoom out and look at this over at least four years. So you've been in Bitcoin, you've seen a halving, you've seen a pump, you've seen a massive correction. You've seen what it's like to be in Bitcoin in a two-year bear market where nobody's talking about it. Everything's quiet. When you've been through all of that, <clears throat> then you're a true Bitcoiner. Then you know why you are in Bitcoin. So if we zoom out to the five-year chart, all of a sudden, she's looking a lot cooler. This down here, if you're new, is the 2017 pump. This is Clearly the high of 2021, uh, pretty decent correction back up and we're correcting a bit more. If you look out though, however, since we've had records about 2010, you will see the 2013 pump here, bump in the road. 2017 one here, then you've got this one here. Now, as we move forward, this huge um bull market that we're in right now will eventually look like this one of 2017. The 2017 one will eventually look like the 2013 one. And that is how you build your strong hand. Zoom out, look at the macro of this, and you'll see that over time, five years, 10 years, Bitcoin is only going in one direction. Now, interestingly enough, the video I'm going to run today, I managed to find, I said to some of you on uh, Thursday's show that I've had to change the show and go back to showing some newspaper articles because I didn't have enough ports to run my second phone and run a video. I found a way to do it with the USB hub. So unless it goes and fails me, um, I'm going to be able to run a short video and we're going to talk about it. Before I run that video, there's a couple of things that I want us all to look at. Uh, number one, if I can get this to work, you have got Mr. Jamie Diamond. He is saying Bitcoin price could 10x, but JP Morgan CEO Jamie Diamond doesn't care. What did he say? And the reason I've shown you this is because I only saw this today and I think it's uh, new news. And it says in a new interview, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon continued his history of criticism against Bitcoin, saying, I think if you borrow money to borrow Bitcoin, you're a fool. Now, if you over leverage yourself, I believe you are, are a fool. But imagine taking out a loan, uh, say a 1% or 2% interest rate paying back, and you buy some Bitcoin, and on average, Bitcoin is returning you 200% per annum. You know, anybody with a, their head screwed on would see that as potentially worth considering. I don't do it. I'm not interested in doing it. And I'm certainly not saying you should do it. I'm simply saying it depends if he's referring to people that have gone stupid and completely over leveraged themselves. But here we are again. The CEO of one of the biggest banks on planet Earth is slamming and knocking Bitcoin. And my personal view is he will eat these words down the road. This is not me giving you any type of advice. I just feel people like him and Mr. Schiff and that Taleb guy, I think they're all going to have serious egg on their face. Why do I say that? Before we start to run the video, let's quickly go over and look at one of the tweets that I've got. 
And this is Steve Hankey in the US. He's always knocking Bitcoin, uh, etc. And he said, and I quote, it's clear that Jack Mallers of Strike, a company in bed with Naib Bukele from El Salvador, doesn't understand El Salvador's crackpot Bitcoin law. Contrary to Mallers' utterances, Article 7 mandates forced tender, Salvadorians must accept Bitcoin if offered. Now, I don't have a view on this. All I know from listening to some of the really excellent big Bitcoin podcasts that are out there is, unless somebody wants to correct me, I'm led to believe that somebody, a merchant, could accept um, a you know a, a scanned QR code, and they can take that in Bitcoin or their local currency. So does that mean they're forced to accept Bitcoin? Because I certainly didn't think that was the case. Johnny Midas, you're in the house. You're up with all of this sort of stuff. Pop something in the chat, and um, you know put us right on this. But you know this guy is another Bitcoin hater, is he not? So that said, clearly I only run my shows twice a week. So the news about um, Twitter, you know, launching, um, uh, you know, the 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 Satoshi, um, oh, listen, you can tell this is live, brain's gone dead again, that's the age, uh, launched this tipping service on um, Twitter where you can, um, you can, <laughs> you can tip with Satoshi's, um, coinciding with all of this i guess we're going to we're going to see how all this plays out saf correct if they don't want to hold the bitcoin it can then be changed to dollars immediately absolutely saf that was that was my understanding so here we are this guy again he just doesn't know the full facts but of course how many people is he going to influence with what he's saying what i want to do now is go over to my second phone and let's run a video from Jack Mallers on the What Bitcoin Did podcast show and let's see what he has to say and you draw your own conclusions in terms of how the world might look in five years, ten years out. So let's get over here. Fingers crossed it doesn't let me down. Jack Mallers. Let's talk about the internet for a second. You know, there once was a world, Pete, where in order for me to send you a message, I would write it on a thinly carved slice of wood and, and have a pigeon fly it to wherever you are right now and hope that you read it for me to ask, how are you? I miss you, right? Now I do that over the internet. Now pigeons flying with notes became email, right? My TV became YouTube. My social network became Facebook. The global conversation became Twitter. It's called the changing world that we live in. And you either change with it and grow or you become a dinosaur. Don't become a dinosaur, people. Those of you watching this that think you don't understand all this, I would encourage you. You must dig in and learn because listen to what Jack's got to say as this rolls on about how the way we buy goods and services and move money around the world is going to change and it's going to kill the massive companies like Visa and the like. Now, what that that I'm describing the transformation and dematerialization of the Internet, the Internet dematerialized all existing, bifurcated, segregated, independent, localized communications networks. Right. Maybe the newspaper in South Africa was published on Wednesday. The newspaper here in Chicago was published on Monday. The newspaper in San Francisco is published on Sunday. Maybe pigeons fly in San Francisco year round because it rarely snows. But in the winter in Chicago, messages were delayed because you were riding horse carriages through the snow and pigeons weren't flying because they migrated south. Right. All of a sudden, you took all these independent, segregated networks that were optimized to communicate. They were expensive. They were inefficient. They had fixed cost. They had legacy. Right. All of these things that you hear me describe on existing monetary networks today. And they all got crushed and they all got dematerialized and they all migrated onto one singular open communications protocol for the world. And that is the Internet. And the Internet as an open mon as an open communications protocol worked naturally everywhere. Doesn't matter if you're in El Salvador. El Salvador people have Internet and use Facebook. Japan has Internet and uses Facebook. Australia has the Internet and uses Facebook. And so you saw an open network, dematerialized closed networks, and everyone migrate onto one singular global open standard. 
And the thesis of Strike and why I invented Strike in the first place is the vision that Bitcoin and the Lightning Network will do the same for money that the internet did for communication. And that the pigeons and the horse carriages delivering messages, depending if San Francisco is sunny and Chicago is cold, is the same thing that I have Venmo and Cash App, you have Revolut and Monzo. You have different bifurcated, segregated monetary networks. They can't talk to each other. They're optimized around different regulation, around different governance, around different standards. They have fixed costs. They have balance sheet float. Western Union sending a remittance to El Salvador could take up to 50%. Now, all of a sudden, we have a natively digital bear instrument. It's physically settles anywhere in the world. It's the same monetary policy and monetary standard, any continent, any place, any jurisdiction, any time. And we have a monetary network in Lightning and a monetary standard that can allow that digital physical instrument to achieve cash finality insulin. And so what I'm saying is the Bitcoin and Lightning network as a monetary network is the same when Internet was for communications. We're going to start to see the dematerialization of all of these independent segregated monetary networks are going to get crushed and we're all going to migrate. And so sending communication to someone like a Facebook post or a tweet, sending money to someone will be just as easy. It'll be free, instant and borderless, just like Twitter is today. Sending money will be also. This guy, <clears throat> he's one clever kid. Now, people keep in mind. Yeah, Rocky said Jack Maller's super genius. I concur with that, Rocky. I really do. He's a genius. I didn't know, but apparently he's been around Bitcoin almost 10 years. And he was actually talking on Vortex's shows. And I love Vortex and I've interviewed Vortex, but I didn't ever see him on there. Maybe I was not um, that educated on it at the point a few years ago, you know, four and a half years down the rabbit hole uh, for me. Um, oh, Elaine wants his closet. Typical Elaine. OK, so back to the show. So what this guy has done is he set this up and I think he knows how this is going to change the world. So first of all, we get this. Um, El Zonte, this Bitcoin beach down in El Salvador that is using uh, Bitcoin in a circular economy, buying and selling goods with Bitcoin. And then we get <coughs> El Salvador's, you know, President Bukele uh, makes it legal tender. Then we've got other countries doing that. People, you need a bit of vision. This thing's going places. This thing's going to happen. Listen to what Jack says. I just caught several clips out of a one hour um web uh, sorry podcast he did with peter mccormack and i would encourage you all afterwards to go and find what bitcoin did and watch the whole podcast because it was flipping mind-blowing i'm talking about when i send ten dollars from here to el salvador does the 10 us paper dollars actually land in another country instantly and at no cost no of course not someone like western union is fronting the money to me that's sitting in western union so someone can pick it up and they're going to do and they're in the legacy financial system peter there's never been a physical bear instrument that can sorry what he's saying there for anybody new to all of this is there is a fund sat at western union so if you he sends money from say japan to or oh, from america to japan western union put that in that japanese account and then they take his remittance and then it can take sometimes 30 days plus for all of that to go through clearing houses and everything else he talks about on this video before Western Union finally get his money back in their pool. That's simplifying it. What he's saying here is imagine a world where you can pay somebody 10,000 miles away and it clears instantly from you to them, no clearing houses whatsoever, no banks involved, no intermediaries involved, nobody going through KYC, nothing. And it's instantaneous. This is, he says, it's never, ever been a huge, achieved in human history. Achieve physical cash finality, physical settlement, physical bare instrument clearance. They're, we're doing, talking about paper. We're talking about a rock. We're talking about what are other forms of money in human history? Shark teeth. We're talking about coins. How can a coin go from the USA to Japan? It can't. Now, what I'm saying for Bitcoin is the most innovative monetary network in human history. Why? Because a, a precursor to having instant global cash finality is the physical bear instrument has to be digital. There's nothing that can travel across the world instantly and at no cost, right? So now you have a digital bearing instrument and the physical Bitcoin can actually go from the USA to Japan instantly and at no cost. And that's what I'm saying. And it also requires no intermediaries. It also requires no trust. And so you're starting to see where a visa escrowing value from the USA to Japan, there's limits because of my credit score. There's counterparty risk for settlement. There's a fee for to receive because of the fixed associated costs and all the intermediaries required for them that they get charged, right? And so now all of a sudden, all that's removed, you can achieve that physical settlement globally 
uh, instantly at no cost and uh, for free with Bitcoin Amazing. for the first time in human history. See that? For, I mean, this is what we're living through. People, try and get it in here where this thing is going, how this thing is going to change the world, the industries, the companies it's going to put out of business. You know, we keep dumping on Western Union, but it's not just Western Union. Think of any way that you pay for things, MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, etc. They either start conforming and looking at how they can embrace this. Otherwise, they die. They get crushed. They're gone. It's like, you know, saying that Blockbuster, nothing was going to take Blockbuster down. And what comes along? Netflix. Where is Blockbuster today? The dinosaurs have got to move with the times. And this guy's got it. He's a flipping genius. If you want to get my attention, type in UK Bitcoin Master. There's a couple I better just check out before we move on with a bit more from Jack. As I understand it, they have to offer the option to pay in Bitcoin. Yeah, so they've got to offer the option, is what you're saying, Yorkie, but they can still take it in their native currency or the dollar. I'm pretty sure that's my understanding. Uh, you also said, I first saw Jack on Vortex's show when he was about 17. He scrambled my brain. He's so smart. Oh, my Lord. Flipping hell, Yorkie, that means you've been around this 10 years. I thought I was a sort of getting towards an OG and Rocky Palumbo was an even older OG. People, if you're in the chat, tell me how long you've been in Bitcoin. Type it in the chat right now. I'm really interested to know because I go back through the chat um, after the show. Let's move on and hear some more from Jack. This guy's a genius and I cannot get enough of what he's got to say. Western Union could charge you 1%. They would. They can't. They'd lose money if they charged you 1% because the amount of intermediaries, fixed cost, credit risk, balance sheet float, forex currency exposure, cost of capital that they incur to pull off a global experience is tremendously expensive and outdated. And now you have an open global native monetary network to the world that does all of that instant for free and at no cost. What? Sorry. Incredible. I mean, he's basically just said what I've just been saying, instantly free and no cost. Um, so we've got some more. Steve Wire in since May 2017. Wow. May the 23rd, 2017, Steve, bought my first Bitcoin. So you and I are brothers the time we got into Bitcoin. Tell us when you got into Bitcoin, people. I'll be interested. Let's hear a bit more from Jack. Whoops. So powerful about that, Peter, is there's no specific standard to McDonald's or if you're paying with a Visa card, you enter the chip. If you're paying with Apple Pay, you scan your fucking phone, right? If you're paying with cash, then you got to be have a vaccine. There's none of that. It's a singular QR code standard. And the Lightning Network doesn't know if the payment's crossing borders. The Lightning Network doesn't know if you're getting a cheeseburger. The Lightning Network doesn't know of, of your credit score. In the same way that a TCP IP request on the Internet doesn't know if I'm fetching a picture of you, if I'm sending a tweet to you, if I'm texting you. Internet communication is a singular standard. There is a protocol to integrate to implement global communication to anyone in the world. And now there is a protocol to implement to integrate monetary settlement to anyone in the world. And so that is so cool. Sending a remittance payment to a contractor for you, Peter, is the same as buying a cheeseburger, is the same as buying coffee, and Zante is the same as sending a tip to someone on Twitter. It's all the same singular global monetary settlement standard for the world. And so that is so powerful. So as cool as it is for you to experience, it's what's expected. We have a singular standard, a singular experience to achieve monetary settlement between us human beings. And the fact that it isn't in the U.S., I mean, it cracks me up. It'd be the equivalent of – El Salvador enabling the internet and you being, wow, this is so cool. I can go to google.com and index the entire World Wide Web from my phone. And then you go home and in order to send a message, you court your pigeon over and send it to fly over to your mate down the block. I mean, you're living in a disruptive time and some people are way behind others. Unfortunately, the U.S. is not as advanced as El Salvador, which is something I never thought I'd say. But here we are. <laughs> the guy's got it, hasn't he? Um Badge, May 2016, beats me. March 2013, Yorkie Bitcoiner. You are the OG, my good man. Steve Wire, May the 31st, SAF, June 21. You are a Bitcoin virgin, sir. Welcome. Stick around shows like this and we'll help you build that strong hand, SAF, for sure. Steve Bruce, March 2021. I don't think that's the Steve Bruce who manages Newcastle United, but there you go. Steve Bruce, welcome. Uh, great to have you in the chat. Um, 
my daughter Buffy, maybe a year and a half, possibly more. Well, that's down to your old daddy working to get you to understand all this stuff. Uh, but welcome. Great to have you in the chat. OK, right. There's one more clip coming up from uh, Jack. And then I've got a few tweets I want to cover with you all. But um, it's really interesting because he draws a parallel. Hang on. I've got some notes here. On this part, he draws a parallel with how Microsoft had the monopoly um, on operating systems or OS, if you don't know what OS stands for, and how Linux, Linux, Linux came along. And listen to how he draws the parallels with people flirting with Linux and then going back to Microsoft and saying, hey, you might want to look at how often you're updating your OS. You might want to look at how often or drop the fees here or drop the fees there or whatever it might be. Have a listen to the parallels because I think this last bit is incredible. And then he finishes it up really with the fact that Twitter has really opened the floodgates for, you know, mainstream um paying for things in Bitcoin, make, dropping tips, doing all sorts, paying for stuff, just mind-blowing. I actually think that this, I think I've told you this story before, but I think that this is very akin to the Linux story. You know, what happened, for those unfamiliar with Linux, Microsoft had a similar monopoly on OS that card processors have uh, today on processing payments, right? They were the singular dominant Godzilla in the room, arguably charged way too much, wasn't improving their product, customer service was terrible. And so what companies would do is integrate, air quote, Linux, flirt with it, entertain it a little bit. Hey, this thing is open. This thing doesn't have any one ruler or one master. Everyone in the world is contributing to this Linux thing. And it's free. And we're going to integrate it. And they used it as leverage to negotiate with Microsoft as a potential threat and say, hey, you know how you guys are charging us X? Well, bring that pricing down to Y because look at this free thing we're flirting and playing with. You may want to be nicer. Your customer support has taken two weeks to reply. You may want to make sure they reply in two days. You guys haven't released a new feature in two years. You may want to start releasing product enhancements every two months. And you started to see, and it was initially just a leverage play. People thought it was cute. Linux wasn't li widely distributed. But then all of a sudden it was open and it had network effects. It took on a mind of its own and Linux... OK, so it was this little thing that people flirted with Linux. What are people doing with Bitcoin and the Lightning Network? They're flirting with it. They hear about it. Oh, there's not much liquidity on there, not much Bitcoin on there, whatever. It's coming, people, and it's coming, I think, like a juggernaut. It became the dominant OS, and I think the same is happening for Lightning. Oh, Lightning's cute. Not many people are on it. Look how many locked Bitcoin. What's the capacity on the Lightning Network, which is an inaccurate metric and shouldn't ever be referenced ever? Um, but yeah, let's use it. It's free. If I'm an acquirer, if I'm McDonald's in El Salvador, all of a sudden the Visa, Visa network's charging me 2.9% to receive a payment from Peter. But if Peter scans an open interoperable QR code with any of the existing services, including maybe his Twitter account to escrow me value, I don't pay anything. That payment's not reversible. That payment settles instantly. The money I get, I can spend right away. I don't have to wait Visa to clear it from my account. Yeah, let's integrate that. Hey, Visa, you sure that's how much it costs? 2.9%? You sure it's not 1.9%? You sure you don't want to be a little nicer? And then all of a sudden... It's McDonald's in El Salvador, turns to um, the entire country of El Salvador, turns to one of the largest social networks in Twitter. And before you know it, is the Lightning Network is the singular monetary standard for instant physical and free clearance going to become the predominant monetary standard for the entire world and usurp these Godzilla-like aliens and old heads that have a monopoly today? These Godzilla-like aliens. I absolutely love that, that have got these monopolies. And he's absolutely convinced, and every time I listen to him, he blows my mind, that he is going to take them down. And I feel if there's anybody could do that, it's young Jack Mallers. But I also feel he's got to be a bit mindful that he's, got, he's putting a target on his back. And, you know, we know what governments are like, don't we? If you upset their apple cart, they're going to come after you. How many people have been disappeared because they disagreed with something or they spoke out about something? You know, you've got Snowden, you know, just one that spoke out and now is exiled from his own country. Just one, you know, so... Um, I just, 
it's exciting, a way to go. But if Jack doesn't, somebody else will carry the torch. But, you know, way to go, Jack Mellors. I think he's doing the most incredible job. And, you know, I think what we, we should never underestimate here is by Jack Dorsey deciding to put that button on Twitter that we can't do it in the UK, by the way, people. Um, we're told that strike, according to Jack on Peter McCormack's show, there was a hint that we might see strike here um, by the end of 2021. Let's hope. But just imagine being able to tip somebody on Twitter, drop them them satoshis. There are there are platforms now, I believe, and you know I'm behind all of this as well. But I'm learning where you can actually run a show and people can you know stream sats to you for every minute they're watching and choose how many sats a minute they want to pay you, which is absolutely incredible. So am I going to look into that? Yeah, of course I am. But, you know, equally, you know, outside of Bitcoin, I've got a life, I've got another business, I've got family, you know, so I don't want to be so far down that rabbit hole that, uh, you know, at the exclusion of everything else and everyone else. But I'm slowly starting to get my head uh, around all of this. So if we quickly shoot over to the desktop, quick shout out to Matthew Underhill's book. Um, It is a great book. He's in the, the author is in the house. Um, this is now available on Amazon uh, Audible as well. If you're a listener, I'm a listener. I've read the book twice. I've listened to Audible. Absolutely superb. Check it out. A great book for novices, for beginners, for somebody just um, edging into uh, and checking out Bitcoin. I saw Josh the News say something, um, and it was December 2016, but now I'm more into Hex. Well, that's your call, Josh. I'm not on here to say you're an idiot, you're a muppet, what are you doing that for? But I'm telling you, I got a whole bunch of hex for free and then I turned them into Bitcoin as soon as I possibly could because I'm Bitcoin only. Um, I don't believe in slamming other coins, but way to go. I think you're crazy, but it is what it is. Okay, uh, a few tweets uh, before we pull the show together. One from Bored Elon, found this one. Money lost by consumers through crypto scams last year, 80 million. Money lost by consumers through overdraft fees last year, 12 billion. Doesn't that just tell its own friggin' story? 12 billion they've harvested in overdraft fees alone. El Sultan Bitcoin. Um, there are two kinds of people right now. The ones wanting to own a 40 grand car and the ones looking into Bitcoin. And I think if you're the 40 grand car head, look into Bitcoin, understand where it's going and you'll get that 40 grand car and Bitcoin will put you and your family in a way better financial position just the same, just by looking into Bitcoin and forgetting the car. Delayed gratification. You've all heard the story. And if you haven't, I'll say it again. Two and a half years ago, I was going to buy a new Mercedes um, and I decided to put it into Bitcoin instead. That bit that I put into Bitcoin is now worth over $300,000 and I'm still not going to go and get a Mercedes because you know why? Holding Bitcoin has taught me delayed gratification. It has taught me to hold the most pristine asset on Mother Earth and do nothing with it and keep it for generations and then learn of ways as the time goes on how to leverage against it, borrow against it, take out what we call positive debt against uh, an appreciation asset and then never touch the asset itself. So um, all of a sudden, I don't want to pull any of my Bitcoin out. I really don't. So this is a really good tweet. And then Gabriel Devine. I'm talking to Gabriel at the start of October, hoping I can get him back on the show over the next couple of months. He was a great guest. Check him out um, on my bitcoininterviews.com site. Gabriel's a very deep thinker. He's a very clever individual. You should really listen to what this guy has to say. He's been on Bitcoin Meister's show many times um, as well. So you might want to go into Bitcoin interviews and check out my interview with Gabriel Devine and he'll be coming back. Bitcoin is far stronger than any social media narrative or attitude. Adoption is, <clears throat> excuse me, inevitable because of its incentives and the humans who value it. Toxic or not, Bitcoin wins. 
Enough said. And if you ask Gabriel to break that down, he could break that down and I could do a whole show about it with him because the guy is just so clever. Okay, I want to just come back before we uh, put my quote up to end the show. For those that have joined late, welcome Klaus S. Great to have you in the house. Um, a very, very sad day. I heard today again that Vention um, from Vention MGTOW, uh, check out his YouTube channel. There were three videos there he did um, on the days leading up to him passing away. Um, he sadly passed away Saturday afternoon. Um, I got that through somebody else that I was told to check out that was giving updates about Vention and his health. Um, he sadly passed away. So again, for those that missed it, I'm just letting you all know it's a very, very sad time. He was a great Bitcoiner. He was a guy that spoke his mind. Um, it's a very, very sad time. So Vention, rest in peace. We will carry on the mantle and the mantra for you uh, most definitely. So you know me, I love quotes. I found this one. He who asks is a fool for five minutes, but he who does not ask remains a fool forever. So uh, who do I put in that category? I would say Peter Schiff. I would say nothing or no one is going to convince him to come round to where this thing is going to go and he's going to go down with his ship. And I understand why. He's a gold bug. That's his business. His business is to sell gold, to get people into gold derivatives and all that type of stuff. I get it. But, you know, there are so many people and I take my hat off actually to Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary because at least I know he's messing around with DeFi and stuff. But at least he put his hand up on Pomp Show recently and said, I got it wrong. He said, the one thing I do is I look at the markets. I look at everything's going on. He said, and when that changes, my narrative changes. When that changes, I change. I can say I hate something one minute and the next minute, the figures, the stats, the averages show me different and I switch. That's good. There is nothing wrong with that. But to stay entrenched in your ways because you just can't let go of the mindset that I can't ever be proved wrong, I think is futile. So ask your questions, people. Get your people that ask Bitcoin questions jumping on my show and I'll do what I can to help inspire them to get off of zero in terms of Bitcoin. So he who asks is a fool for five minutes. But he who never asks remains a fool forever. I just think that is superb. So, people, thank you, as always, for your support. Um, away on location. I will be back on Thursday with another show from this same location. Um, so, whatever you're doing, thank you for your support. Please tweet this out. Um, please share it out. Please um, subscribe to the channel, bash the bell button, send the link to some of your friends to come and catch the channel, and I'll do my best to inspire them as well. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my vacation with my lovely wife. I'll be back 6 p.m. on Thursday. For now, people, don't forget, can you go back into the comments and just leave a few words because it helps mess with YouTube's algorithm. It keeps it on, on YouTube longer so that more noobs can find it. Um, that said, I'm out of here, people. Have a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are at. Johnny Midas, I hope wherever you're moving to goes well, dude. I really do. You guys that are in the 21 million club, there'll be an email coming out over the next day or so for when the next meetup is. So look out for that. I'm out of here. Catch you all on Thursday. Have a great week. I'll leave you with my social media links. Cheerio.